In order to be successful for today's instruction, you need to have your UK diagram, your Iranian diagram, your AP comparative review county comparison chart in a blank sheet of paper. Okay, you have never seen a chart like this, so I'm gonna tell you exactly how I want you to complete it. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, please listen as you finish getting all the things I've requested. I am teaching you UK starting Iran. Tomorrow I'm gonna finish Iran and start Russia and hopefully touch China. On Wednesday I'll finish China, get into Mexico. Hopefully on Thursday I'll finish Mexico and finish Nigeria. You're testing on, thir on Friday. 35 questions, all multiple choice. You have a mock exam on Saturday at 7.45 in the morning. At one point this week, I'll tell you exactly what you need to know for your details. It's going to be about two and a half, three hours. I've never given it, so I've never seen what it actually looks like with all the administrative notes. With that being said, as soon as you finish, it will do the multiple choice first, which is 80 minutes, then you have 100 minutes for your writing. As soon as you finish writing, you leave. Like, if you finish with 20 minutes to go, you leave. You're not hanging out in the cafeteria for 20 minutes. You're going to turn in your stuff and you leave, go to brunch, go to the beach, do whatever the hell you're going to do. Um, you get to leave. That's Saturday morning. You need to be at the cafeteria at 745. With that being said, if you are not taking the mock exam, you are taking it early, this is the day. This is it. You are taking it today after school. I've got some people taking it now. I have some people taking it earlier. I've got people taking exams all the damn time. So if you are taking it, it's today. It starts today. You're doing the writing portion today. You're doing the multiple choice portion tomorrow. The makeups will be done ahead of time. As you heard, you have a 35 question test. These two packets. This packet is worth uh, 50 points, your boxes are worth 100 points, just like they have been. Those are due on Friday. Once you get through this week, you're essentially done with Samantha Bennett on the workload for Samantha Bennett. Is everyone clear? Next week, it'll be very much check your grades on your mock exam, take your responsibility for what you know and what you don't know. Then the following week is exams, friends. It's here, and you have two exams going. Once exams are over, I don't give a shit. <laughs> it's over. So you still, for all my under, everyone under a senior, still have county exams, but if we've trained for an AP exam, do we really have to stress out about a county exam? No. So with that being said, let's talk about these little charts. Now, as you can tell, I've already done the heavy lifting on the chart, yes? Who sat there and made the damn chart? Me. I've done the heavy lifting. So this isn't supposed to kill you. It's supposed to help you clean up the details. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the type of annotations. You will be making annotations as you go through the sheet, okay? So under UK, here we go. Unitary means central government strong. Devolving means local gets more power. These are the type of annotations that I'm looking for. It's not incredibly overburdening. It's just a simple acknowledgement of what's there. <coughs> I jump down here to House of, Law House of Commons, vote for PM. Lower, only position voted, okay? The House of Commons is the only thing they vote for in the UK. Okay, so those are the type of annotations that I'm looking for. There should be annotations in every section, okay, for the Supreme Court, now independent. I would write created in 2016 or de-evolution cases, okay? That's what I'm looking for, every single column Every single thing should have a quick little annotation. I'm not looking for incredibly burdensome, just a simple tying it to something and making sure you understand the vocab. Is everyone clear on the expectation? I'm telling you right now, the more effort you put in, the more effort you're going to get out. I'm telling you right now, some of you have really genuinely improved over a review. Some of you I'm getting more and more concerned about <laughs> because the effort is just not there. So remember, 
I thought I had about 30 people. I think I'm down to probably about 12 that I'm worried about. Okay, so that's they're pretty damn good. Okay, so the test that you took on Friday, you will be looking at those answers. I do not have time this week, yes, because we're about to transition to the UK, and I'm going to give you a whole review on UK right now. You will be checking those next week during the mock exam week. When we're going over the mock exam, we'll also look at the final section of Gov so you know exactly where you're making mistakes and where you are not making mistakes. Is everyone clear on the expectations? Perfect. Take out your notebook, take out your boxes, whatever you are taking notes on for the UK. This is going to go by real quick, so I hope you're ready. What? Um, no, but I have paper towels in the front. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, the UK. First and foremost, you need to know the UK uses common law. What is common law, Brit? From precedent, okay. So all the laws are based on precedent and they're not actual codified laws. So when we're talking about common law, everything about how it works is based on a prior court case. Okay, so everything is based on common law. It is an uncodified constitutional government. What does that mean? It is uncodified constitutional government, Desmond. There you go. It does not have a place where it has all of a list of all the things you can and cannot do. If I wanted to know how to impeach a president, a president, Mr. Clark, where am I going here in the United States? Constitution, because it's literally listed right there. It tells you all the powers. If I wanted to know what the fines were for crosswalking here in the state of Florida, where would I go? The laws of the state of Florida. Those are codified. England is not codified. It is based on multiple documents. Their entire government is based on uncodified constitution that is based on both documents, court cases, and procedures. What are the two major documents <coughs> that their entire government structure is based on, Nick? We use them too here in the United States. Yes? Yeah. Magna Carta, and what does that do? It limits the king's power and creates what? Parliament. What is the second document, Brooklyn? What Bill of Rights? You're right. It's the English Bill of Rights, which includes Enlightenment ideas. That is the implementation of Enlightenment ideas into the British government. You need to know that it is brought in after the Glorious Revolution, okay, and after the English Civil War. All of this is on the back of your little chart, too, ladies and gentlemen. You are a complete idiot if you are not looking at your little country charts while you're studying for your tests on Friday because they are delightful. Okay, let's talk. You need to know the British system is a unitary system which means the central government is the most powerful aspect of it. You need to know because it's a unitary system where the central government has all the authority, in modern times we're starting to see a de-evolution process. And what is de-evolution, Sydney? Even local governments. There you go. Local governments are getting more power. And they created what institution to deal with this, Alice? the third branch of our government here in the United States? No, the legislators in 1215, Sophia? They created the Supreme Court to deal with the de-evolution, correct? Okay, so you need to know, ladies and gentlemen, that at the head of state of the UK is King Charles. <coughs> there are two terms you need to understand about King Charles. You need to know that he is a figurehead. Jake, what is a figurehead? Yeah, he has no power. Yeah, he's there. He's there as the face of England, but he is no real power. You also need to know he is there for what L word, Brennan? 
When we talk about a government having the right to exist, we use what L word to describe it? Grant. Legitimacy. legitimacy. He's the traditional legitimacy of the UK. That's why he exists. Now, we technically call him head of state, but does he actually make any decisions that inflect foreign policy? No. Who is the real seat of power in the UK, Alex? The Prime Minister. The Prime Minister. The Prime Minister is what we call head of government, but in the UK, he's actually head of government and head of? So, when the U.S. president comes to town, is he really talking to Prince, uh, King Charles about things, or is he really talking to the prime minister? Prime, prime minister is all the real authority, even though they give a cer uh, ceremonial title to the king. Figurehead, that's why he gets that. Okay, let's talk prime ministers. Prime ministers are elected by who, Selena? House of Commons is elects the prime minister. The prime minister is what party in the House of Commons? Uh, Desmond? The majority party. So whatever party is in the majority, that's where the prime minister comes from. When we talk about the prime minister, we are talking about the position in the executive branch. <coughs> in the executive branch, the prime minister is obviously at the top, but also within his power is the cabinet, and you need to understand that. The cabinet and the prime minister are seen, are seen as one continuation. Unlike here in the United States, when they are seen as two, one has power, the president, and the cabinet is subservient here in the United States. In the UK, the cabinet are equal. One of the same is the term we use to describe the British cabinet. Now, what, can, what type of powers can the cabinet do to show their opinion? What is the biggest power play the cabinet can do, Jordan? No, they can't do a vote of no confidence because that's in Parliament, but they can do what? It starts with an R. No. Referendum can only be issued by a Prime Minister. Desmond. They can resign. You better be writing this down because you clearly don't know it. The only real power um, the Cabinet has to check the power of the Prime Minister is to resign. Did they resign quietly or very loudly? very very loudly because they believe that they have their position because the people gave them their positions because they serve the people not the prime minister <coughs> here in the united states you serve at the pleasure of the president, president. you got your position because the president put you there in the uk the cabinets are selected on the highest qualification you earn that spot and if the prime prime minister isn't doing what they're supposed to do what do you do you resign and you resign loudly so you can tell the people the prime minister is not doing what they're supposed to do to put pressure on what type of vote in the House of Commons. A no confidence vote. That is the whole point. So the cabinet has a ton of power and a ton of influence. They really have one check, but it is a huge check on their power. Okay, let's talk about House of Commons. Put a big star. It's the only elected position in England. That is the only thing they are voting for is in the House of Commons. You need to know it's the lower house. What is the name of the upper house, Caitlin? House of Lords. That's the upper house. Okay, which one does all the work, Brooklyn? House of Commons is the one crafting the law, passing the law. The House of Co uh, Lords has to pass it to allow it to become a law. But they're not crafting, they're not debating, they're not doing any of that. They're overseeing it. You need to know that there's over a thousand uh, people in Parliament. There's over a thousand people in Parliament, Desmond. <laughs> they do in West Punishment. Uh, to a degree, yeah. To a degree. I mean, they're not saying they put to death because they don't do death penalty over there, but yeah. Okay. Now, when we're talking about our House of Lords, there are three groups of people in our House of Lords. Give me one, Emerson. Hereditary. Hereditary. And how do you become a hereditary member of the House of Lords? 
You're born into it, and when you die, what happens? There you go. Is that it's a large majority or a small majority? Small. small majority in Parliament at this time. Okay, who is my second group of people in the House of Lords, Britt? Uh, like a, uh, the life people. Life peers. Your life peers. Those are very successful British citizens who were given the position by the monarch by the monarch, sometimes the prime minister. These are people who have been successful in business, successful in life. Um, they've had like Olympic medalists become life peers. What happens when they die, Jimmy? Uh, it doesn't go to their kids? Uh, no, it doesn't. It, it, it ends, their line ends. It's to their life. So when they die, their kids don't get it. Their life, it's over. Life peers. This is the largest majority of people in the House of Lords. And what is the smallest? We only have like 15 of these. Uh, what do you got, Emily? Yeah, you're spiritual. The clergy members of the House uh, um, at the Church of England. Okay? So that is who is making up your parliament. Okay, now keep in mind, they have not had a Supreme Court until 2015, 2016, because if it got through a thousand British people, they always just thought it had to be okay for the law to pass, yes? All right, now you should know. I didn't get that. Okay, so common law we've already talked about, de-evolution, we're taking power away from the unitary government. Uh, the judicial branch has already been created. There are three major political parties in the UK. The largest one, uh, the two biggest ones are the Conservative or the Tory, which are similar to your Republican. They're similar. Does similar mean the exact same? No, because everyone in England, a well, majority in <coughs> England hate guns, and here in the United States, we, we love our guns, especially if you're a Conservative. Okay? In the UK, they're called Tories. There are three prime ministers that you need to know in order to be successful on your AP exam for UK. Are you ready for your big prime ministers? Let's do it now and we'll get back to Tories. Here we go, your three prime ministers. The first one is Tony Blair. Tony Blair is going to usher in the healthcare system. Okay, is the Labour Party which would be considered what here in the United States? They're ushering in health care there. They're liberal, there would be more Democrat. <coughs> Your second major person, you need or there's no order to this. I just said Tony Blair first. Margaret Thatcher is number two. Her nickname, and there's more information you need to know about Margaret Thatcher than you do Tony Blair. Margaret Thatcher, you need to know she's known as the Iron Lady. She is the first female prime minister ever in British history. You need to know that she is in power in the 1970s into the 80s. Her American president equivalent is Reagan. They're in charge around the same time. Okay, so Margaret Thatcher, 1970s, 1980s. You need to know her nickname is the Iron Lady. You need to know her equivalent is Reagan. She will stabilize England's economy. She will stabilize England's economy post-decolonization. She will stabilize England's economy post-decolonization. So keep in mind, in the 1950s and 1960s, you don't have to write this down, England's going to lose all their colonies after the Second World War, and they're, it's going to throw their whole economy into chaos. Margaret Thatcher is the one that calms everything down and gets them back on track. Your third person you need to know is going to be Boris Johnson. Boris Johnson is the official prime minister who gets them out of Brexit. So he's the last prime minister and he's the one who ushers them out of Brexit. Okay, those are the three major prime ministers you need to know for the UK. Let's go back to parties. We'll put a prime minister. So the conservative one is like your Republican party here in the United States, except for the excitement for guns. 
Your second major party is the Labour Party. That is going to be more like your uh, Democrats today in the United States. You should know um, that it is Tony Blair who is the most famous of your Labour Party. They are responsible for health care. And then you have your Liberal Democrats. It's a three. It's a multi-party system. You need to know that for the UK because most of the other countries are not multi-party. <coughs> the UK is a multi-party. And the third party is the Liberal Democrats. They are the smallest, not as influential. So you should be taking notes here, friend. What do you got? Uh, they're the only multi-party. They're the only multi-party. The closest one, next one would be Mexico. Um, but technically, they're still a two-party in Mexico. Okay. Actually, no, I'm, I screw with it, multi-party. So it's just them and Mexico. All right. They are a multi-party system. Interest groups. There's a couple terms that you should remember. There are two major terms that you need to be familiar with. First of all is pluralism or pluralist system. That's when you allow the same companies to influence governmental business decisions. Pluralism is when you allow a few companies, the same few companies, to influence business decisions for the government. This is your traditional way of doing it. Write it down. This is your traditional way. You don't change it. It's the same four companies that come and talk to you about business, and you always listen to those four opinions. The modern way is neocorporatism. Write it down. The traditional way is the pluralist. Now we're doing the neocorporatism. That is when you only listen to <clears throat> businesses at the top of performance in their speciality. So when you talk to the highest producing company in whatever field. So if we're talking to banking, okay, would you talk to a teeny tiny local bank director or the largest bank in the country? Mm -hmm. Largest bank. That's what cor neo corporatism is. If you're doing a technology bill, would you talk to, I don't even know, like a failed social media company or the three biggest social media companies. The biggest, that's what neocorporatism is. So instead of the favorites of the, of the prime minister, it's the biggest one in the agency. You need to know that the media in the UK is the freest out of all of our countries. You need to know they do have a problem with tabloids. You can buy the favor of tabloids. If you have enough money, you can make them print things. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? It's a bad thing. But they still have access to report all the bad news they want to. They're just easily persuaded. Everyone's got problems. Next thing you need to know, your cleavages in the UK. You need to know the UK has two major cleavages. The first one is ethnic cleavages. What is the traditional ethnicity of the UK? They're white people, yes? They're now getting a lot of other people from other parts of the world, and it is starting to uh, take over the majority. So whites versus everybody else. Now, one of the reasons why there are so many different ethnicities in the UK is because of their colonialization, yes? I'm here because you were there is the big quote when we talk about decolonization. A lot of your Africans who were in support of the British, when the British were kicked out of power, came back to the UK because that's where they were safe. They would have been killed if they stayed home. India, a lot of Indians are going to move to the UK after India gains its independence in 1947 because they favored the British. It's for their safety. So the population of it, of the UK has drastically changed in the last hundred years because of decolonization, yes? The white people are now becoming less of a majority and more of a minority, and they're cranky about it. This causes what major decision to occur? The xenophobia, fear of foreigners, is going to cause what major political decision, Caesar? 
Brexit. Tie it to it. Brexit is caused because British people didn't want more foreigners coming into their country. The second ethnic cle uh, cleavage is going to be Catholics versus Protestants. Now, I guess I should have started with this. What are the four major countries inside the <coughs> UK? Sophia. Okay, not Ireland. Ireland is wrong. No, definitely not Southern Ireland. There's no such thing as a Southern Ireland. Jimmy. There you go. North, Northern Ireland, Wales, Scotland, England. Those are your four countries that make up the UK. Okay. You need to know that it is a mixed economy for the UK. The UK owns their own oil production and gas production, and everyone in England has to buy gas and oil from the British companies. And what is the name of the British oil company? You've all been to their gas station. It's a green sign majority with a little bit of gold. What do you got, Desmond? No, no, 7-Eleven is not British. <laughs> Mr. Clark, BP, British Petroleum, is what it's called, and we have it here in the United States. British Petroleum is run by the state, which makes it a mixed economy. They do have private, and they do have state-run uh, policies. Okay, for domestic policies, ladies and gentlemen, you need to know it is a welfare state, which means the government pays a lot of money in order to provide for their citizens, the citizens pay a lot in taxes. What is a perfect example of their welfare state, Ms. Uh, Jack? The British, it's one of those things that always come up. Their healthcare system is a perfect example of, uh, of a welfare state. All right. Foreign policy. The biggest foreign policy, of course, is Brexit. Brexit is caused by two. I've already told you one. Caitlin, what is one of the reasons for Brexit? Ethnic cleavages. Okay, the whites were becoming, starting to become less of the majority, and that was becoming an issue. The second major reason is because the value of their currency started <laughs> to shift. The pound to the euro caused a lot of, draw, of interest issues. Now, hindsight, 2020, is the British better off out of Brexit, out of the EU, or worse off? They're worse off. They have lost trade control, and they've been blocked out of trade treaties. It has hurt their economy, which is why they're currently sitting at a 12% inflation rate. Well, we are sitting at a 7% inflation rate, and the EU is sitting at a 9%. Those are big numbers. Think of how much it hurts right now with inflation. Actually, we just hit six one. Um, it got reported last week. But how much has inflation hurt our lives? Imagine doubling it. Ooh, that's how bad it is in the UK right now. Okay, you need to know that the E, uh, the UK is in everything. They are in the United Nations. They are in the World Trade Organization and the World Bank. Keep in mind, are these? Is the UK just in it or running most of these? They're running most of it, okay? Keep that in mind. They are huge power players on the world stage and they have huge influence. However, is their influence rising or waning? It's actually rising, especially in the democracy. They are the strongest democracy out of all of our countries. They are now the strongest democracy in the world because who fell back? Yes, we were the strongest democracy in the world until about two years ago and now we're second and England has taken our position. You need to know, this is the only really unique one that you really need to know, they're in NATO. NATO stands for North Atlantic Treaty Organization. They are a major player in it. Who leads it, though, Katie? <coughs> Who leads NATO? Us, we do. The United States leads NATO. UK is power player number two. You, um, NATO is a big player in what modern day, right now, present conflict in? Huh? Ukraine, absolutely. The whole war in Ukraine is, fought, is being fought over NATO. The whole war is being fought over NATO because Putin hates what more than anything? NATO. Okay. 
Current issues. Of course, we have Brexit. You need to know it. You also need to know that we just talked about how the UK is actually made up of four countries. Three out of those four countries have voted to get out of it. Now, they've never won, but they're getting closer and closer to being voted out. So you know, need to know that there are <coughs> independent voting occurring inside the UK. So Wales has voted. They've uh, voted about 36% of the people in Wales want out. Scotland, they're at like 48% want out. You need to get 51% to leave. Uh, Northern Ireland, I think they voted as like 32%. Those numbers are significantly higher now than they've ever been in the history of these countries. What do you got, Desmond? I don't know. I'm not an uh, economic theorist. All right. I am done. I am done. I want you to leave, all of you, because I need to get ready for my mock exam. Have a good day.